Nobel Prize in Physics for 2016 was given to three theoretical physicists, David Thaulis, Duncan Haldane and Michael Kostelitz. And the citation says, for theoretical discoveries of topological phase transitions and topological phases of matter. So, let us see what these discoveries were. The Nobel site identifies a specific set of papers by these authors and mentions what these papers achieved. The first one is 1972 paper of David Thaulis with Mike Kostelitz, who identified a completely new type of phase transition in two dimensional systems where topological defects play a crucial role. And we will explain a little bit what are these defects. They are called Kostelitz Thaulis vortices. Uh, their theory applies to certain kinds of magnets, to superconducting and superfluid films and has also been very important for understanding quantum phase transitions in one dimensional systems. There is another paper by Thaulis and different collaborators where they explain the very precise quantization of the Hall conductance in two dimensional electronic gases. This also uses topological concepts. And finally, in completely independent and only distantly related work, uh, Duncan Haldane's papers uh, of 1983 were recognized uh, for their theory of spin chains which incorporate effects of topology in a crucial way. Now, I will briefly talk about the Kostelitz Thaulis work of 1972. This is a short and a long paper uh, about long range order and metastability in two dimensional solids and superfluids. And what they do here is to consider various different model systems, theoretical systems and talk about the kind of phase transitions one can and cannot have in such systems. So, a phase transition is when a system changes its phase. We are familiar with liquids going to solids or gases going to liquids as we vary temperature. And uh, another kind of phase transition is when magnets go from an unmagnetized or disordered high temperature state uh, or phase to an ordered magnetized low temperature phase. And in this uh, transition, the spins which are randomly pointing in different directions all line up in one direction. Now, the intuitive explanation for this is quite simple. Thermal fluctuations at high temperatures tend to disorder and randomize the spins, while at low temperatures it is favorable for the spins to minimize their energy by lining up together. And this is uh, something very familiar to us uh, when we handle ordinary magnets. Now, one feature of this phase transition is symmetry breaking because at high temperature, the spins being random respect the overall rotational symmetry of the system, but at low temperatures, by choosing a preferred direction to line up, they spontaneously break that symmetry. And this concept has been very important both in condensed matter systems and also in particle physics systems. Now, we have a good understanding at the theoretical level of such behavior. It is called Landau-Ginzburg theory and it uses an order parameter which is the average magnetization of the sample which at high temperatures is 0 because of the randomness of the spins, but at low temperatures it is not 0. So, this order parameter jumps as we go from high to low temperatures. But this picture which works in for example, three dimensional solid bodies fails in low dimensional systems which are either two dimensional on a surface or one dimensional along a line. In such systems, something different happens and this kind of phase transition that I just described is not even possible. It is ruled out by a theorem of Mermin and Wagner which say there is no spontaneous magnetization at low temperature. Now, there are ways to understand this in terms of low momentum spin waves which disorder the system at all temperatures and the conclusion would be that there is no phase transition, no symmetry breaking and no long range order at low temperatures. But when Kostelitz and Thaulis looked at this situation, they found that in a particular class of models, numerical and approximate analytical studies gave a kind of behavior at variance with this general prescription or this general picture. The kind of behavior seen involved a jump in the specific heat at some temperature and a 
divergence of the correlation length at the same temperature and this was the case in spin systems called the XY model that is a particular class of models of two dimensional spins which are unit length and can point in any direction. Uh, but it was also the case in many other systems not related physically but mathematically having similar properties lying in two dimensions and having different kinds of uh, order, different kinds of order parameters and different kinds of fundamental degrees of freedom. Let us focus on the XY model because it is considered sort of the classic model to explain the costelitz thaulis uh, transition. Uh, here you have spins randomly oriented in any direction, they are placed on a square lattice in two dimensions and the Hamiltonian would like to minimize the energy by lining up all the spins. This is called a ferromagnetic system and uh, one diagnostic of how the system is behaving is the so called two point correlation function of two spins at far away points on the same lattice as a function of the separation along this lattice. In three dimensions, the typical behavior of spin averages and correlation functions is given by these formulae. The two point function of spins decays exponentially at high temperatures. At a certain critical temperature, it suddenly changes its behavior to a power law which is a much slower decay as we separate the spins and then at low temperatures, it goes to a constant reflecting the fact that the spins are all lined up. So, this is the kind of behavior in three dimensional systems, but by studying two dimensional x y models numerically and in approximations, it was found that only the high temperature behavior is similar to that of 3D systems namely exponential decay, but the low temperature behavior after a certain temperature becomes a power law and it remains a power law for much lower temperatures. So, there is a phase transition, but it does not mean that the spins all line up. Uh, however, there is some kind of correlation at long distances between different spins and this is called quasi long range order. It is a weaker kind of long range order. And Kostelitz and Thaulis wanted to understand the mechanism for this kind of behavior and the mechanism they proposed was very ingenious and turned out to have very, very deep consequences. Their basic observation was that spins in two dimensions can form a vortex configuration and I have drawn here two vortex configurations, one in which all the spins point out from a particular point and the other in which sometimes they point in and in other places they point out and you can distinguish these vortex and anti vortex configurations by noting that as I go counterclockwise around uh, the origin, in one case the spins also turn counterclockwise, but in the other case they turn clockwise and these are vortex and anti vortex configurations, each of them can form spontaneously and they are topologically stable because if I have a vortex then even very far away the spins are obliged to point outward which is not their normal state of minimal energy. Now, there is a topological winding number associated with this spin going round as I circle the center of a vortex. However, vortex anti vortex pairs do not carry such a number because they can be continuously deformed away and they can spontaneously form. The second figure here shows a spontaneously formed pair of a vortex in red and an anti vortex in blue. What Kostelitz and Thaulis asked was whether these vortex anti vortex pairs are obliged to be bound to each other when they form or whether they can separate and roam freely around the material and they realized that these two behaviors will give very different physical characteristics to the material. By a simple calculation, they argued that at high temperatures, it is entropically favorable to liberate the vortices and have them run all over the system and this disorders the spins completely, while at low temperatures, the vortices and anti vortices must form tightly bound pairs and these tightly bound pairs cause a mild disruption of long range order leading to quasi long range order. So, that is the basic discovery of Kostelitz and Thaulis and in their paper they studied not only the x y model, but also a 2D lattice gas, a 2D crystal, a 2D neutral superfluid and in every case in one or another language in the language of dislocations or in the language of flux vortices, they found exactly the same behavior. The underlying theme was a topological phase transition and this concept has come to dominate physics 
uh, of two dimensional materials and has been experimentally realized in many different systems. For example, thin films of superfluid helium, disordered thin films of superconductors, planar arrays of superconducting junctions, granular films of superconductors and the melting of 2D solids. In every case, we are talking of two dimensional and not three dimensional systems. It is a very interesting fact that Kostelitz and Thaulis were not motivated to explain any particular experiment, rather there were a range of theoretical observations which made a picture that no one understood and they proposed an understanding which is solid, robust and has many experimental consequences. Now, I will briefly talk about Haldane's contribution. Nominally, it was the same kind of system except that for Haldane, he was considering a quantum spin chain. So, at each site of a lattice, you have a 1D lattice, you have a spin which is a quantum spin. So, it, it obeys the, the quantum rules and it is represented by Pauli matrices and he considered the antiferromagnetic system. So, the Hamiltonian likes for these spins to be anti-aligned. Now, these spins, it is well known, are quantized in units of h bar and the units are 0, 1 half, 1, 3 half, etcetera, half integer or integer. These are the rules of quantum mechanics. And Holden argued that for half integer spins, the chain is gapless, which means there is no gap to excite uh, the degrees of freedom, while for integer spins, it is gapped. Gapped roughly means insulating, gapless roughly means conducting. Now, what Haldane did actually was really striking. He mapped the spin chain to a nonlinear sigma model, which is a continuum field theory, and used a result due to Sasha Polyakov, a string theorist, who had shown that the sigma model is asymptotically free, like quantum chromodynamics. And essentially, asymptotic freedom means forces are weak at long distances and strong at short distances, and this is what leads to these spin chains being gapped. But if this were all the story, then all spin chains of this kind would be gapped regardless of their spin. However, Haldane showed that there is a topological invariant, a winding number, such that if its coefficient is quantized and if that quantized coefficient takes a certain value, then the topological term if it essentially cancels the gap due to the rest of the Hamiltonian and the system becomes gapless and therefore, the system is in what is called a symmetry protected topological phase and Haldane's work launched the study of such phases which today are extremely popular in physics in the context of topological insulators and many other topological particles and materials.